this evening we will be discussing the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita which is entitled the divine and demoniac natures so in the previous chapter krishna has described that uh, whoever knows krishna as the supreme personality of godhead is an over of everything and such a person engages in full devotional service to krishna because of knowing krishna's actual position and krishna also told in the previous chapter this is the most confidential part of the vedic scriptures because he also had explained that the goal of all the vedic study is to know krishna therefore krishna says this is the most confidential part of the vedic scriptures and whoever understands this becomes wise and he will become perfect in all respects now in this chapter krishna explains what is divine nature and what is demoniac nature among people because in this chapter it is explained in this world there are two categories of people entire human society can be divided into two categories the first category of people are called divine nature people divine nature people have certain divine qualities by which they are called as divine nature and then there are demoniac natured people who have certain other qualities called demoniac qualities so lord krishna explains what are the divine qualities by which a person is known as divine natured and what are the demoniac qualities by which a person will be known as demoniac natured now what is the reason for krishna explaining this the reason is krishna says the divine natured people because of their divine qualities they are qualifying themselves for liberation from material bondage to uh, go to krishna's abode the demoniac natured people their demonic natured qualities by which they work or act they are going to get bound up more and more and more and by their demoniac qualities they simply are progressing towards hell that means they are degrading themselves more and more in this world first of all krishna describes the divine qualities so he Uh, lists twenty six divine qualities, hmm, which belong to people with divine nature. I just read the list of twenty six qualities which Krishna mentions here: fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self control. performance of sacrifice study of the vedas austerity simplicity non violence truthfulness freedom from anger renunciation tranquility aversion to fault finding compassion freedom from covetousness gentleness modesty steady determination vigor forgiveness fortitude cleanliness freedom from envy and freedom from the passion for honor all these are 26 divine qualities by which those who are divine nature they work 
Now you can understand all these are wonderful qualities, very nice qualities to be found in any person. Some of these qualities, Srila Prabhupada has explained, uh, fearlessness particularly uh, applies to, it applies to everyone whose divine nature, but particularly applies to those who are in the renounced order of life, those who are sannyasis. Particularly for a sannyasi, it is important that he be fearless because a sannyasi should be completely depending on the Supreme Lord Krishna for his entire existence. He should be fully convinced that Krishna as the Supreme Lord is seated on my heart and I am never alone even in the darkest region of this world, even in the thick forest, I am not alone. Krishna is always with me and he will completely take care of me, he will protect me in all circumstances. Unless one has this conviction, actually one should not accept sannyas. That is what is told in the scriptures. So fearlessness particularly is uh, to be um, cultivated and uh, demonstrated by a sannyasi. Then a sannyasi also has to, uh, particularly a sannyasi has to purify his existence. Of course, every human being should try to uh, purify their existence so that uh, they become completely free from all material um, influence and then they progress towards uh, becoming completely purified to become eligible to go to the spiritual world. But a sannyasi particularly has to purify his existence by following the particular rules and regulations of the sannyas ashram. One of the very important rules for a sannyasi is that he should never have any intimate relationship with a woman. This should not be misunderstood. That is because a sannyasi has to actually maintain uh, the standard of renunciation from all um, type of material enjoyment. Therefore, it is a, a stricture that a sannyasi should never intimately associate with women. Then the next item for a sannyasi is to cultivate knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Because a sannyasi especially is meant for distributing this spiritual knowledge to the people in general. Generally people are not so much aware of the fundamental spiritual knowledge which is very important for them. Just like the understanding that each person is not the body but is spirit soul. Most people do not know. Neither in our education system, our present education system, this being taught. So therefore, a sannyasi generally goes door to door, village to village, town to town, travels for the sake of reaching out to the people and enlightening them in this most important aspect of knowledge. Of course, a sannyasi goes with the excuse of begging uh, but actually the real purpose is not to beg for some food the real purpose is to awaken the householders who are lost in their material life to awaken them to spiritual reality hmm? that is the reason a sannyasi actually should be uh, well versed in the in the spiritual knowledge and he should actually systematically cultivate knowledge to be able to distribute this knowledge for the benefit of the people in general. Like that, um, the other qualities also we can understand. Uh, charity. Charity is especially meant for the householders. In the Vedic culture actually, uh, the brahmacharis, the retired Panaprastas and the renowned sannyasis, they don't 
actually have a means of earning their livelihood. But a householder is meant for earning his livelihood, maintain a family and also give charity to the brahmacharis, the vanaprasthas and sannyasis. So householders have to give in charity. It is recommended that a householder give in charity especially for uh, propagating this spiritual culture, Krishna consciousness. Then, as far as self-control is concerned, it is meant for all human beings, all civilized human beings, particularly it is meant for householders who should not unrestrictedly engage in enjoying the senses in the family life. Especially if somebody wants to make spiritual progress, then they have to regulate uh, their interaction with others in such a way that they don't indulge in sense enjoyment unrestrictedly. Sacrifice. Sacrifice also is especially meant for the householders. <coughs> the scriptures describe five kinds of sacrifices for every householder called Pancha Mahayagya. But actually, uh, in this age, it is not practical to follow all those rules and regulations for performing those type of sacrifices. So, uh, it is recommended that in this age, everyone uh, perform the sacrifice of chanting and hearing the holy name of Krishna called Sankirtan Yajna. It is inexpensive. It is very easy to perform. One simply has to individually and in congregation chant and hear the Hare Krishna mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare by performing this sacrifice of chanting and hearing the holy name the entire atmosphere can get, become purified spiritualized it is very very easy to perform and it is very effective in this age then a study of the scriptures, Swadhyaya, Vedic study, especially is meant for the brahmacharis, that they should be completely uh, dedicated for studying the scriptures and for this they have to strictly practice celibacy, the brahmacharya vrata, hmm? the, they should lead a life of celibacy so that they can focus their attention fully in properly studying the scriptures. Simplicity means one has to lead a very simple life so that one can save time for cultivating spiritual life. Everyone uh, should actually lead a very simple life. Hmm? Ahimsa or non-violence. Non-violence is generally understood as don't harm others but the deeper meaning of non-violence is not stopping the progressive life of anybody else not becoming an obstacle in the spiritual advancement of other people now this particularly means for the sake of satisfying our palate, for the sake of enjoying eating some flesh, one should not kill animals. World over, people are engaged in uh, killing animals, if not directly, for the sake of eating meat, they are actually supporting. Uh, so many animals are killed. While there is plenty of vegetables and fruits and grains, uh, why should people uh, do this uh, animal, support this animal killing? So, the animal which is killed, actually, its progressive uh, evolution is blocked. Of course, every living being is the spirit soul, not the body. 
but that doesn't give us a license to kill the particular animal or any other creature hmm? nobody has right to uh, kill any other living being because nobody can create a living being it's not possible so therefore uh, one should completely avoid all types of animal killing and one should also not become a hurdle or a block for uh, anybody's evolutionary progress then to check anger is very important because as soon as there is anger one's entire body becomes polluted and checking anger or avoiding anger means even on provocation one should not become angry one should be tolerant then uh, avoiding fault finding this fault finding is a very common uh, uh, thing that is seen in the society so those with divine nature they avoid fault finding uh, that means one should not unnecessarily correct others of course those who have position of responsibility for some dependence they should try to instruct and correct the mistakes of their subordinates or dependents just like parents should correct their children or teacher should correct the students but unnecessarily finding fault with somebody with whom you don't have responsibility that is to be avoided then modesty means one should not perform any abominable action and determination means one should not be frustrated if some attempt is not successful that is called determination simply because there is some failure doesn't mean that we give up hmm, our duty or our uh, responsibility no then um, cleanliness not only applies to the body of course we should uh, keep our body clean in uh, externally by taking bath and wearing clean clothes but we should also have internal cleanliness we should cleanse our heart or our mind by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare now this is the instruction for people in general how to maintain external and internal cleanliness but it also particularly is applicable to the mercantile people that they should be clean in their business dealings that they should not deal in the black market that is particularly mentioned like this these different qualities are meant for um, divine natured people and by these qualities divine natured people work in such a way that they progressively uh, purify their existence and they become qualified for ultimate liberation on the other hand krishna describes some of the qualities of the uh, demoniac natured people so particularly he mentions few of them in the beginning and later on he will describe in more detail arrogance pride anger conceit harshness ignorance these qualities belong to those of demoniac nature all these are undesirable qualities as you can make out so shrila prabhupada explains demoniac natured person is very very arrogant arrogant means uh, they uh, desire uh, to possess uh, some kind of education by which they become very very conceited or very 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 uh, proud and they want to make a show of that hmm? or they are too much proud about some qualities they may have or some wealth they may have and they desire to be worshiped by others though they may not deserve 
to get such respect they demand respectability then over trifles they become very angry and they speak very harshly not gently and they do not know what should be done what should not be done this is due to their ignorance so in this way they act very whimsically and according to their own desire they don't follow any proper authority so one of the characteristic features of the demoniac nature people is that they don't follow the standard vedic scriptural injunctions this is a single uh, characteristic that differentiates between those who are divine natured and demoniac natured the divine natured people always follow the scriptural authority the demoniac nature people never follow authority scriptural authority that means the demoniac nature person wants to independently do whatever he likes to do he doesn't care about what will be the uh, the trouble he is giving to others or the difficulty he is giving to others a demonic nature person doesn't care so uh, krishna particularly mentions these uh, divine natured people their divine qualities are conducive for liberation and the demonic natured people with demonic natured uh, demonic qualities they are meant for bondage and they are simply progressing towards hell they are degrading they are not making real progress and in detail krishna describes uh, rest of the chapter the demonic natured qualities those who are demonic natured they do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done hmm? neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them so you can see all the bad qualities are to be found in demonic nature people these demonic nature people they say that the world is not real there is no foundation there is no god there is nobody in control simply this world is according to the demonic nature people produced by sex desire and only cause is lust now this kind of understanding is totally wrong the demonic nature person thinks that he can do whatever he likes he is not accountable to anybody mostly this demonic nature people think might is right but what they do not know is actually the stringent laws of this material nature are controlling everybody is controlling everyone but the demonic nature people are too much conceited because of which they are not able to understand this reality so they are living a life of uh, illusion actually so they want to simply indulge in unrestricted enjoyment and they think that uh, they are not accountable to anybody huh? that's why they would like to believe that there is no god in control and this world is by chance coming to existence they have this chance theory hmm? actually nothing is happening by chance in this world if we properly study the scriptures we'll understand everything is completely regulated everything is directed everything is controlled there is a complete system of control hierarchy of control so these demoniac nature people do not know that following such conclusions which are completely wrong the demoniac who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence they engage in unbeneficial horrible works 
which are meant to destroy the world. So they always are engaged in activities which of destruction. They are less intelligent because they do not understand what is really beneficial for them or for others. They end up doing um, so much of uh, cruel activities. Just like by their uh, demoniac nature, they become more and more violent and they are cruel to animals and they are cruel to other human beings also. They have no idea how to behave properly with others. Such people are considered the enemies of the world and ultimately they will create something which will bring about the destruction of the entire world. Indirectly, Srila Prabhupada says, this description indicates that the uh, Invention of nuclear weapons of which the whole world is today very proud. Actually, it is so very dangerous. At any moment, war can take place and destroy these atomic weapons can destroy the whole world. But the demons or demonic natured people, what is their achievement after having discovered or invented these nuclear weapons? Anyway, people are dying due to so many other causes. If they could have invented something to prevent death, that would have been wonderful. That would have been very nice. But they can't think of anything to uh, stop people from dying, to help people from avoiding death. That they cannot do. Instead, anyway people are dying, these people have discovered how they can mass destroy or kill people. What is the need for this? Where is the need for this? Nobody wants to die. But these people, because of their demoniac nature, they can only discover or invent such things. They cannot find out something which will prevent death. That is not possible. So that's why this uh, description here, that they are always engaged in unbeneficial, horrible works. Then they always take shelter of insatiable lust. Lust is something which can never be satisfied. So, because of their lust which is never satisfied, they are always uh, proud, they are always uh, illusioned and they are sworn to unclean work attracted by the impermanent. That means they want to go on increasing their desires for simply enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. And result of this mentality is they become attracted by two things. More and more sex enjoyment and more and more accumulation of wealth because their enjoyment requires that they have more and more and more money. They become also attracted to wine, women, gambling, meat eating, all kinds of sinful activities. And in this way, they actually degrade themselves by whatever actions they do. They never are able to actually understand that they are simply progressing towards hell. They believe to uh, gratify the senses and to the end is the prime necessity of the human form of life. Thus, there is no end to their anxiety. They are bound up by hundreds and thousands of desires, by lust and anger. And for this, they secure money by illegal means. Uh, any amount of money they think is not enough. So like this, uh, a detailed description is being given of the demoniac nature person's qualities. Finally, Krishna says that uh, these people, bewildered by their false ego, by their pride 
lust, anger, they become ultimately envious of God and they simply blaspheme real religion or real religious principles. Now Krishna says, as far as these demonic natured people are concerned, uh, Krishna actually uh, uh, puts them into the ocean of material existence into various demonic species of life. What happens to them after they die? They are going to take birth in demonic species of life. Attaining repeated birth among such species of demonic life, this person can, a demonic person can never approach Krishna. Gradually they go down to the most abominable type of existence. Just like uh, when they degrade themselves, they degrade themselves to take birth as dogs and hogs. And then after that, millions of lives they have to wait before they again get human form of birth. Then Krishna concludes this chapter by telling, there are three gates leading to hell. They are lust, anger and greed. These three particular qualities Krishna is pointing out here, they are the three gates to hell. Every sane man should give up these three qualities, lust, anger and greed. Otherwise, they lead to the degradation of the soul. The beginning of demoniac life is simply a person trying to satisfy his lusty desires. And when he cannot satisfy lust, he becomes greedy and angry. More and more he desires to satisfy his lusty desires. So by such uh, uh, desires, one actually degrades oneself. And Krishna says, one who has escaped these three gates to hell performs acts conducive for self-realization and gradually progresses towards the supreme destination of going to the spiritual world. But a person who does not act according to scriptural injunctions, who acts whimsically, cannot attain any perfection, cannot attain any real happiness and can never approach even the supreme destination. So the scriptural injunctions are not simply a matter of belief. Just like the state laws. Now somebody may believe or not believe, but the state laws have to be obeyed. The moment somebody violates the state laws, there is a department, police department, to punish such offenders or violators of state laws. Similarly, there is a complete law of the Supreme Lord that is working in this entire creation. And the laws are given in the scriptures. And one who does not follow the scriptural injunctions is going to be punished by the Supreme Lord through his agents. Just like after death, those who have been very, very sinful are those who have been violating all the uh, scriptural injunctions, they'll be taken by force to Yamaraj and Yamaraj will actually punish them for their grievously sinful activities. So, uh, everybody should actually, as a, especially as a human being, one should be responsible to understand what are these laws which are working and abide by those laws, not simply uh, uh, know them, but also act according to those laws. Hmm? Sometimes people know that something is forbidden or something is wrong, but they don't care to avoid such forbidden uh, activities. Hmm? They think nothing will happen. Of course, immediately they may not suffer some punishment 
or they may not get a reaction. But definitely the laws of nature are being enforced by uh, the Supreme Lord and his representatives, the Devatas. And in course of time, definitely one will have to uh, suffer the consequences of all violations. Just like in this life, I may have to suffer from some disease or we suffer from natural calamities or we suffer from some anxiety or some uh, kind of uh, distress. So what is the cause for this? It is our own uh, violations of the laws of God. We have violated, we have to actually suffer. So, uh, the last verse of this chapter, Krishna explains, one should understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. And knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated, ultimately to uh, go to Krishna's personal abode. So, the uh, Vedic literature actually are uh, clearly explaining what are the duties of a different uh, uh, persons. Hmm? It is not that duties can be uh, self-made. Just like uh, Prabhupada gives a very simple example. If you go to work in a particular organization, you cannot just go and say, okay, I will do work here. No. You have to actually receive from the proper authority what is your work particularly, where are you going to work, what is going to be your specific task or duty, whom are you going to report to and what is it that you are going to get out of doing that particular work. All that has to be uh, properly understood and properly adhered to. Similarly, when we take birth in this world, we cannot simply choose whatever we want to do and consider that as my duty. No. We should understand from the Creator, from the Supreme Creator, the Supreme Lord, what is my duty, what am I supposed to do and what is the uh, result of doing my duty. And what is my ultimate goal? Uh, many people don't even know that this life is actually a journey towards an ultimate destination. So that ultimate destination is to actually reach the kingdom of God, to reach Krishna's personal level where we belong. So to reach that destination, we have to actually understand what our duties are from the Vedic scriptures. And in that way, if we follow the Vedic injunctions, uh, then we can definitely expect that we will make progress towards our ultimate goal of life. Now, following the Vedic injunctions, there are many, many Vedic uh, injunctions, but of all of them, the most important injunction for people in general in this age is to actually uh, know about God and actually act in such a way that one works towards this uh, establishing our forgotten relationship with God. That's the most important aspect of our duty as human beings especially. So to know about God and to re-establish our lost or forgotten relationship with God. The most uh, uh, effective uh, instruction or injunction, Vedic injunction is again, what I have already told many times earlier, is to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Simply by chanting, we can actually know everything about ourselves, about God and about our relationship and we can actually re-establish our relationship with God by this very simple yet very powerful and effective method of 
chanting and hearing the Hare Krishna mantra. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.